Wickedness is real. Oppression is real. But more real is our victory. For this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. God has commissioned Bishop David Oyedeko to preach the word of faith, liberating men everywhere from all oppressions of the devil. Get set for an empowerment that will enable you to rule in the midst of your enemies and subdue them under your feet. Now, Bishop David Oyedeko. Dominion is impossible without power. You can't rule in the midst of your enemies without power. The only language the enemy respects is power. Through the greatness of your power, thy enemies shall submit themselves unto you. Power is the language of dominion. And this month we've been exploring the process of empowerment so that you can become a man and a woman of dominion indeed. Dominion will remain theoretical until you are empowered for it. You don't have a choice. I don't have a choice in the matter. Even the Bible recognizes that the opposition has power. He said, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. So Jesus recognized that the enemy has power. So you need access to greater power Otherwise, your dominion is not in view. The enemy also has power. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. So you and I don't have any choice in the matter. If we are not empowered, we will die as victims. Because the enemy is called the wicked one. For a wicked man, the more you cry, the more he enjoys it. So we don't have a choice in the matter. We are either empowered for dominion or dominion remains theoretical in our lives. Jesus said, I taught you for three and a half years, but that is no substitute for power. If you go out like this, you will be dead one day. Study ye until ye are empowered from above, and then you can go everywhere. Something is happening to you this morning. <laughs> Something you will live to remember forever is happening this morning. <laughs> Today is going to mark the beginning of beginnings in your life. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Every object of value carries a cost. This morning I'll be speaking on the price of power. What do I call it? The price of power. Every object of value carries a cost. As a matter of fact, in the world of merchandise, value is a function of cost. That means every precious thing carries a cost with it. Nothing of value is ever truly free. Somebody has to pay something for it to be made available. We took salvation for free, but it cost God the Father, His only begotten Son. It cost the Son, humiliated death, before this treasure can be delivered to us. It's important for us to know that power carries a cost. I'm going to go through some scriptures that will help you appreciate the cost that goes along with power. Isaiah 55 verse 1 Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 1 Oh everyone that thirsted come ye to the waters 
and he that has no money, come ye by and eat. Yea, come by wine and milk without money and without price. He that has no money, come and buy. So it's not money we used to buy. But when buying is involved, a cost is connoted. You are buying. Come and buy. But I'm not saying come with money to buy. But come and buy anyway. There's a cost attached. Come and buy. Come ye to the waters. Come and buy. Come and buy milk. Come and buy wine. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me and eat ye that which is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Two things are involved here. You are either buying with labor or you are buying with money. He said this one money can't buy it but something must go into it before you can get it. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which satisfies not? Incline your ear to understand the cost for the wine you are looking for and come unto me here and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you even the sure mercies of David. Come and buy without money. Come and buy. Come and buy. Now, Jesus referred to these same scriptures in John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39. Jesus was speaking here, and he said, In the last day, John 7, 37, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. O everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters. And that's what will happen in Isaiah 55, verse 1. Come ye to the waters. Now, the Bible says, Verse 39, but this spake he of the Holy Spirit. That means Isaiah 55 is a prophecy concerning empowerment. Come and say concerning empowerment. He was speaking of the Holy Spirit. And the prophet said, come and buy. Come and buy. Come and buy wine. You know, you see, in Ephesians 5, 8, 5.18, Ephesians 5.18 Be ye not filled with wine Be ye not drunk with wine But be ye filled with the Holy Spirit How many understand what I'm talking about? They said, come and buy wine Now on the day of Pentecost When they saw them speaking in tongues They thought that they had been drunk with wine And they said, these are not drunk with wine As ye suppose For this is but the ninth hour of the day so they can't be drunk at this time. So the Holy Ghost manifests itself as wine. As what? As wine. And then Isaiah said, come and buy wine. Come and buy wine. You remember in Acts chapter 2 verse 14, when Peter was explaining the incidents at Pentecost, he said, they are not drunk with wine as ye suppose, because they thought they were drunk with wine. And Isaiah said, come and buy wine. And I'm sure you agree that they really bought it because they had to tarry there. They had to what? They had to tarry there. And with one accord, they were praying. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind and cloven tongues as of fire and settled upon each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began speaking in other tongues. They were there waiting. They were there waiting in prayers. They were there waiting, searching the scriptures. They were there waiting. 
And suddenly, when the price was fully paid, the power was released. I'd like you to be very sensitive. Come and buy wine. Come and buy milk. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which satisfied not? Incline to me. You need this water of life. You need this empowerment. You need to be empowered or you die a victim. I'm sure it's in your Bible that when a strong man keeps his house, his goods are in safety. But when a stronger man comes against him, he will take away everything that he has. So you can't watch the enemy outweigh you in the school of power. You can't watch that. So you are not safe as long as the opposition becomes stronger than you. You are not safe as long as the opposition becomes stronger than you. Come and buy. I'm sure you'll understand this better from the parable of the five foolish virgins in Matthew chapter 25 and verse 1 to 9. Now, in the midnight, the bridegroom came and they had no oil in their lamp. So they told their neighbors, ask their neighbors, give us some oil in our lamp. And they said, so that is not being sufficient for both of us. Go to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Verses 8 and 9. And you know, the Holy Spirit is the oil of God. Is the oil of gladness. Is the oil of joy. Go to them that sell and buy for yourself. So there is a cost in the school of power that must be paid before you are empowered. Nobody is ever empowered by accident. Every empowerment is a product of a conscious cost that is paid. It's not that you sat down one day and then the Holy Ghost just came on you. That's an evil ghost. The Holy Ghost comes on you when the price is paid for it. Captain Kuma said, great woman of God, he said, anyone can have what I have if only they are ready to pay the price. Anyone can have what I have if only they are ready to pay the price. I'm afraid the charismatics is becoming a religious system void of power. Many Christians celebrate motivational literature that has no Jesus factor because they have not tasted the true power of God. So that becomes the guide of their life. Building on sand. Building a house with saliva. Because they're not in touch. Say with me, there's a price to be paid. If I must be truly empowered. The wife said, not so. Lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. You buy for yourself. Now listen. T.L. Osborne was a missionary in India. And nothing was happening. Every Sunday morning, he was the assistant missionary of that organization. He would write the topic of the Sunday school subject. And only four or five people, he would play guitar, the wife would sing. He told himself, if we continue like this, life and destiny will lose its meaning. I'm going back home. So he went back home and took a pastorate of a small church. Then one day he went to a William Brown, you know, 
crusade and he saw the mighty move of the spirit of God according to him he had more than a million voices saying in his ears you can do that too you can do that too so he went back to his little church entered the little church office and locked up the door and said God I'm not coming out of here until I reach out to your power he stayed inside that room until heaven was opened and heaven that opened ever since that time has not been shot till now. So this week can be the beginning of weeks for you. Yeah. If you will do something about it, this week can be the beginning of weeks for you. Yeah. If you will do something about what I'm sharing with you today, go to them that said, and buy for yourselves. There was a time in those days, in the days of John, forgotten this great name, this healing revivalist, Alexandra Dowie. People were dying. He was doing burial almost every day, every week in his church. And he said, God, what is this? This would not have been happening if Christ were alive here in person, if I were around here in person. And he began checking in the word of God and praying and fasting. And some days tumbled on Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. According to him, it exploded in his heart that there is an anointing that can stop this. Lord, I need this anointing now. And then a great healing awakening broke out, which is considered the father of the healing ministry on the earth today. You understand what I'm saying? He went for it before he could get it. You can't see that they are wishing that it happens one day. It never happens for any man that way. Go to them that sell and buy for yourselves. No one can buy on your behalf. Go to them that sell and buy for yourselves. A woman stood there and said, she waited on the Lord for three days. Broke off the hand of the devil. Reinforced her spirit man in fasting and in prayers. And then she overcame. Go to them that sell and buy for yourselves. As long as the opposition becomes stronger, your destiny becomes insecure. And unsafe because the opposition is embodiment of wickedness. The more you cry, the happier the wicked one becomes. There is no mercy in the eyes of your opposition. He sees you as a captive of war, and a captive of war does not expect mercy at all from his captors. You need power. And I think it's good for you to know that something has to be paid for you to be empowered. Something has to be paid for you to be empowered. And I've been looking at this very briefly this morning. I call it the five-fold prize. The five-fold prize of power. The first thing we want to look at is desperation. What do I call it? What do I call it? We saw it here in the call to worship this morning, Psalm 63 and verses 1 and 2. The word says in Psalm 63, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. For what? To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. So to see his power, there has to be a desperation. Come and say desperation. We have said it often here, whatever you don't desire, you don't deserve. There has to be a desperation. My soul thirsted for thee, and my flesh longeth for thee, O Lord. 
In a dry and thirsty land where no water is, to see thy power and thy glory. To see his power, there has to be a thirsting and a longing, a desperation in your soul to see thy power and thy glory, even as I've seen thee in the sanctuary. Isaiah 55 said, Oh, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters. So only the desperate are entitled to empowerment. It takes a sincere desperation for you to experience true empowerment. And John chapter 7, verse 37, Oh, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters. So there is a thirst required. There is a thirst required. It's very important. And this thirst is built on the fact that without him you can do nothing. You recognize that without him you can do nothing. That you are limited by power and by mind. It's only the spirit of God that makes you unlimited in the com conflict of life and in the pursuit of destiny. Not by power, not by mind, but by my spirit, says the Lord God of hosts. You recognize that? That in John 15, 5, without me, ye can do nothing. In Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10, not by power, not by mind, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Verse 6, sorry, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. So it's very important for you to know that a consciousness of your helplessness without him is a principal factor for desperation. I can't go on without him. I am vulnerable to every satanic plan without him. Very important. And when there is such a desperation, God is committed to perform. Can I hear your amen? amen. Isaiah chapter 44 on desperation verse 3 for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty upon whom will he pour it upon everybody for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the, the dry ground I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. I will pour my spirit upon him that is thirsty, him that is desperate. And then they shall blossom. In chapter 41 of Isaiah, verse 17 and 18. When the poor and the needy seek water and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst. I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. What will I do? Verse 18. I will open rivers in high places. When we talk about rivers, we talk about the Holy Spirit. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. When the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst, I the Lord will hear them. I the God of Jacob will not forsake them. I will open rivers in high places. God is going to open his rivers upon your life this week. I'd like you to see this week and make this week a week of desperation for supernatural empowerment. A week of what? Desperation. Something must break loose in your life this week. This week must not pass like any other week in your life. There is so much decoration in the body of Christ today but very little manifestations. Oh, knowledge has crept into the church and the church is celebrating the knowledge of letters. 
but without minding the reality of the spirit. And yet the letter killeth. It is the spirit that giveth life. The letter killeth. It is the spirit that giveth life. The letter killeth. It is the spirit that giveth life. I'd like you to believe God this week that whatever has taken you to ransom to this point, this week, you are taking over finally. I said this week you are taking over finally. There is a desperation price to pay in the school of power. Come and say desperation price. Also we have a sanctification price. Come and say sanctification. Say it loud. Let me hear you. Sanctification. Now look at the empowerment process of Christ. The Bible said that throw no God is forever. Psalm 45 verses 6 to 8. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou loveth righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, has also anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Empowerment, your desire for empowerment, demands practical sanctification. What do I call it? practical sanctification no one puts a new wine into old wine scheme Luke chapter 5 verse 38 but new wine must be put into new wine scheme new wine must no matter how much you cry God will not put new wine into an old man New wine is the preserve of new men. Luke 5 verse 38. It takes a new man to be entitled for the new wine. Look at it. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 23. Proverbs 1 23. Turn ye at my reproof. And I will pour out my spirit upon you. And I will make my words known unto you. So until you turn, it is not your turn. Turn ye, Proverbs 1, 23. Turn ye at my reproof, and I will pour out my spirit upon you, and I will make my words known unto you. As chapter 3, verse 19. Repent and be converted. And there shall come a time of refreshing from the Lord. So there's, there is a repentance before there can be an infilling. Time of refreshing, Acts chapter 3 verse 19, will always be preceded by a repentance and genuine conversion. I'd like you to build up a desperation in your spirit because you don't have value without his power in your life. You don't have value. You are utterly vulnerable to satanic maneuverings without the power of God at work in your life. Turn ye at my reproof and I will pour out my spirit upon you and I will make my words known unto you. Turn. Think of Jesus. In John chapter 8 verse 46, which of you convinces me of sin? And Paul writing about him in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21, he who knew no sin became sin for us. In Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15, he was tempted at all points just like we are and yet without sin. What am I talking about? That is why he was anointed without measure. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. There is an anointing reserved for you for this great year of dominion. 
no deception of the devil will rob you of it. No maneuvering of Satan will rob you of it. There is an unction in reserve for you for this great year. You can't afford to sell your bad right to carelessness. I want this week to be tagged in your soul. A week of spiritual desperation for empowerment. Spiritual, whatever it costs to pay for me to be truly empowered. I'm ready, Lord. I'm ready, Lord. No one is ever empowered by accident. The prize number three is what I call a revelation prize. Come and say revelation. Say it loud, revelation. Paul said in Romans 1, 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for inside that gospel lies the power of God. So every genuine encounter with the truth empowers a man for triumph. Can I hear your amen? amen? Every genuine encounter with the truth empowers a man for triumph. Every genuine encounter with the truth because inside the truth lies the power of God. In the school of power, everyone had something from this book to see the things that they're beginning to see. They are, you must find something here before something truly flows into your life. This is the power reservoir. This is where you tap the tangible power of God from. This is the power reservoir in the kingdom. Jesus was teaching Luke chapter 5 and verse 17. The Bible said, and the power of God was present to heal them. Now, Peter was speaking in Acts chapter 10. And the Holy Ghost fell on all them that had the world. The power of God came out of the world and landed on the people. So there is a revelation prize. And you remember, the book of Proverbs said, by the truth. And he said in Isaiah chapter 5, by wine and by milk. First Peter 2 2. That you desire the sincere milk of the word of God that you may grow thereby. So they buy it. They go for it. They don't read the Bible like reading newspapers. Tribune, this day, daily times. No, they buy, they go to buy. There's a desperation. That is in search of what is lost. In Luke chapter 15, the parable of the lost coin. He said, Which of you, having ten pieces of silver and you have lost one, don't you light a candle and begin to sweep thoroughly until you have found it? So you keep sweeping through the word of God until you find what to hold on to to confront the opposition. Can I hear you say amen? amen? Just like if you set fire up, where there is no more wood, the fire will go out. I'm sure you know that. The Bible says, where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So, the Holy Ghost is the fire. The word of God is the wood. So, when the anointing lacks the wood, the anointing will sway. The fire will go out. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So to keep the fire of the Holy Ghost, you have to keep your attention on the word of God for revelation. You must be tired of just getting information from the book. You must graduate from information to revelation. 
That's where the thing is. That's where the thing is. For where no wood is, chapter 26 of Proverbs and verse 20. Proverbs 26 and verse 20. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. And the Holy Ghost is the fire. The word of God is the wood in our context. So you keep throwing revelation into the fire and the fire keeps moving higher and higher. That fire will not go out in your life. So we buy the wine and we buy the milk. I'll talk about we buy the oil and we buy the wood so as to keep the fire burning. We buy the oil and we buy the wood to keep the fire burning. Price number four. I call this one the supplication price. Come and say supplication. Say it loud. Supplication. In Luke chapter 11 and verse 13. If you been evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will God give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? Come and say ask. They were praying with one accord. In chapter 2, the Holy Ghost came. Ask chapter 2. And in Ask chapter 4, they lifted up their voice in one accord and prayed. And the place where they prayed shook and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? Now in Luke chapter 3, Jesus himself also being baptized and praying. The heavens opened. And the Holy Ghost descended upon him in form of a dove. He prayed it out. And he prayed it down on his life. Can I hear your amen? amen? I want you to see this week as a week of desperation for supernatural empowerment. You have been molested enough. You have been humiliated enough. And enough is enough. In Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1. Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the later rain. And the Lord will make bright clouds and give showers of rain upon every one grass in the field. What do you do? Ask. What do you do? Ask. What do you do? Ask. Don't ask for nothing this week. Just rear up an altar of prayer Pay the desperation price. Pay the sanctification price. Pay the revelation price. And as you pay the supplication price, the heavens will open. Can I hear your loud amen? Can I hear your loud amen? I wish we know what we need. What we call our need is not really our need. The harassment is because of the lack of power. So what we take to God in prayer is not our real need. Our real need is to be adequately empowered to command the respect of the opposition. To be what? Adequately empowered so as to command the respect of the opposition. To be adequately empowered so as to command the respect of the opposition. I'd like you to understand that. When this fivefold covenant prices is paid, empowerment becomes a reality. Now the price number five is what I call the praise price. What do I call it? The praise price. The praise price. That is what services the power system. It services the power system and keeps it from knocking engine. Let the people praise thee, O God, and let other people praise thee. Now he said in, in Psalm 92 verse 1, it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing his praises because he's the most high God, to speak of his loving kindness in the morning and his faithfulness every night. 
Now verse 10 of Psalm 92 says, Then your horn shall be exalted like the horn of a unicorn. You shall be anointed with fresh oil. So the praise price services the power system. It turns out the old oil and brings in the new one. So that you don't lose viscosity in the process and knock your engine. It pours out the old oil and brings in the new one. And that's why every time Jesus needed to manifest his power, Father, I thank you, the new oil comes in. Can I hear your amen? amen. So murmurers can't carry that power. Complainers will soon run out of gas. The press prize services the power system and keeps it running at its maximum capacity. Keeps it running at its best. The praise prize. We live in a world of conflict. Power is therefore not an option. It's not an option. It's not an option. In Matthew 12, 43 to 45, Matthew 12, he said, if a strong man keeps, he said, when an evil, an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, it goes in the, in the dry place, it's seeking a place. And when he finds none, he said, I'm going back to where I came out from. And when he came back there, he found the place is swept, garnished, but empty. But what? Empty. So he took seven more wicked spirits than him and came there. And the later end of that man was worse than the beginning. You can't watch the oil run out. You can't walk, watch the wood finished. And that is why this week, I want you to see it as a week of building your power reserves. Can I hear your amen? amen. This week, you are out to build up your power reserves. Amen. Because most people here are completely out of gas. Completely out of gas. So this week is dedicated to building your power reserve so you no longer be a plea to the wicked one. Can I hear your amen? amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? Can I hear your amen? amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? Everyone that will take this week as seriously as I'm mentioning it, you are going to find yourself in a new world at the end of this week. Yeah. Go to them that sell and buy for yourself. So this week, every one member of this church will set three days apart. How many days? Three. With a genuine desperation for supernatural empowerment. Everyone's soul in this church will set three days apart seeking, searching, pressing until you find it. Something is waiting for you to change your position in the kingdom this week. We must go to them that say and buy for ourselves. You have run around for pastors enough. It's time to go to them that sell and buy for ourselves. Everyone that is truly, genuinely desirous of an empowerment, these three days can mark the beginning of beginnings in your life. These three days. I want us to take it as seriously as that. With your Bible in your hand, with books that can pack off your desperation for empowerment on hand. If you need to, take three days off. Sickness has taken many people 10 weeks off their job. Most of you own your own businesses. Take time out 
Say, no, I must get this thing this time. Governor University, many campus is off training session this week. In the Yanaipaja, all the halls are open. Take time off. I must find this thing that is missing. I have certain power posts in my life that I will never forget. 1977, I was in search of the power behind the art of the apostles. Lord, show me what is behind this dramatic manifestation in the art of the apostles. I have not recovered from it. In five days, I found myself in another world. I'm seeing that world now. Years back, I was up on the mountain for three days with a search in the book of Ezekiel. You see, you'll be tired if you are not seeking the power looking through the world. On the third day, I heard the voice of the Lord say to me, Behold, I have touched your tongue with the coal of fire. And from henceforth, as you say it, you see it. You heard a woman here share this morning. She said to me, just walking across, I've suffered miscarriage and her eyes were, were, were battered. I said, never again. I didn't ask what her name was. I didn't ask what the story was. Never again. Three days. More than 20 years ago, about 22 years ago now. Just three days. Repositioned me clearly. You have eaten enough food. Now come and eat the right one. I'd like you to take time out this week. That is, you set time apart in the night if you're on duty. You set time apart while you are driving to work. Oh God, I need an encounter of a lifetime with your power this time. And I make it easy for you. We are all getting into that beginning from Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Everybody in his place talking it over with God. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. Everybody in his place talking it over with God. Filling the sanctuary with your needs. The dead have come alive here once and again. So your dead Christian life carry it here. And say, God is enough. I must say to it finally. Enough, enough is enough. No hypocrite has a future in the kingdom. Enough is enough. I want the sanctuary filled with people desperately desiring an empowerment from above. Dominion will remain theoretical until you are truly empowered. Until you are practically empowered. Dominion will remain theoretical. This sickness today, sickness tomorrow, prayer point today, prayer point tomorrow, should end. The enemy should see you as a man and a woman worthy to be respected. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. It's time for him to say he knows you too. I said, it's time for the enemy to recognize you too. Go to them that sell and buy for yourselves. We are not praying for nothing. But Lord, I want to see your power. My soul thirsted for thee and my flesh longeth for thee, O Lord, in a dry and thirsty land to see thy power. So after now, we set ourselves loose. We invade the hospitals and begin to minister to the sick and they're coming out of their sick bed. Can I hear your amen? Amen. Something happens in the environment, they rush them to you, and as soon as they see you, they have met Jesus Himself. And not only that, everything gives way to you in your job. Every evil bows at your door, every barrier is broken down at your instance. Because you have power with God. Very important. If this is truly your year of dominion, it's time to seek the new empowerment so you can go on. The five foot prize again includes the desperation prize, the sanctification prize, the revelation prize, and what? The what? The supplication prize and then the praise prize. These fivefold prizes will be paid by whosoever will. They don't force a man into it. Whosoever will come you to the waters. Whosoever will come you to the waters. I had a man say this week, this last week, he said, 
Whosoever will can have a new start. Whosoever will can have what? A new start. Whosoever will can have a new start. Come and say, I must have a new start. 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 He said, fear not. It doesn't matter when you came into the Lord. He said, it is your father's good pleasure to give you what? The kingdom. And the kingdom of God is not in words, but in power. That means it is the desire of God to empower you. And this week, it will empower you beyond your widest imagination. So what do you do? You lay yourself bare before the Lord and said, what I need now is your true empowerment in my life that will give me my place of dominion in destiny. I must no longer be a victim of situations and circumstances. I must never be a victim of satanic maneuverings. Enough is enough. I'm set for your power that will give me my place in dominion. Whosoever comes, he said, I will in no wise cast out. No matter how terrible it has been, he said, come. Whosoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Many people in this place will find a new start this week. Yeah. Now listen. Can I eat on your behalf? Can I drink water on your behalf? Therefore we must get to them that sell and buy for ourselves. Can I breathe on your behalf? Can I go to the toilet on your behalf? No one can be empowered on your behalf. No one can be what? Empowered on your behalf. No one can be empowered on your behalf. You must get back to them that say and buy for yourselves. Now see, I was in Abuja some last year or the year before and there was a boy that a child was dead and was on the third floor of the children building, the overflow. They are pronounced the child there. And the woman said they heard that Bishop was coming this way tonight in their all night prayer. The doctors have removed all the gadgets. The child pronounced dead. Church doctors pronounced him dead. Outside doctors pronounced him dead. So he was truly dead. But the woman said, I won't go anywhere. If this man is coming this way today, God will touch this child and bring him back to life. I had no idea whatsoever. I stood on the platform and I read from Jeremiah chapter 5, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? As that word was coming out, plus Job 33, his flesh was dried up. And then there came a messenger and then the recovery came. As the word came out, the child that was there since 3 p.m., this was about 12 midnight. The child jacked up in the upper floor. Now listen, there is no limit to what the power of God can accomplish in your life. The frustration in your business is a result of powerlessness. The frustration in your family is a result of powerlessness. It's time to go for what makes for a breakthrough. It is the power of God. Someone was reading the book, Anointing for Breakthrough when it first came out in January 1993 and as this evil man was reading the book the Holy Ghost came upon him and he went to confess the evil he did to his neighbor who borrowed him the book he said behind the sufferings, the miscarriages you had I'm involved he said the accident you had that gave you this car I was behind it now listen, as soon as he, the confessor said that accident, where you had this car, I was involved. Listen to what happened. This car departed from the face and stamped on the face of the wicked one. Now listen, there is something about power. I'd like you to be excited because this week we open you up afresh. This church is not a social gathering. 
This is not a religious center. This is a power center. And that's why you must do everything in your power to have your portion this week. There is something waiting for you and no one can take it for you. You have to go there for yourself and take it. You can't be tied down by the wicked forever and be watching. Whatever you don't want, you don't watch. So wake up and confront it because you have a power portion with God. Enough of your frustrations. Enough of every setback. Enough of failures. Now lift up your hands and commit yourself to God for this great week of empowerment. In Jesus' precious name. Do you know what God ordained fasting for? Fasting is ordained as an instrument for empowerment. <laughs> he said, is this not the fast that I've ordained? That ye break every yoke. That ye break every yoke. He said, then your light will break forth out of obscurity and your head shall spring forth speedily. So this week will be to you a week of liberty. Yeah. Whatever is tying you down will be broken off your feet. Can you imagine miscarriage, blood, rushing down? Rushing down? He said, no, I know better than that. No, I know better than that. I'd like you to do it the New Testament way. The word, prayer, and fasting. He said, because you don't believe, you disconnected from power, and this kind of great number by prayer and by fasting, you pray the word and you wait on the Lord for his empowerment. It's so important, it's so crucial. This week is to you a week of destiny. Yeah. Hallelujah. These three days could mean an eternity to you. If you will take full advantage of this God-ordained opportunity, if you will take full advantage of this God-ordained opportunity, there is something about your destiny that is tied to what happens to what you do with this week. There is something about your destiny that is tied to it. And I command that grace be made available to everyone. Amen. That each day as you wait on the Lord will be a day of encounter indeed. If it is true that God is one that gives me encounter when I wait on him, he will give you your own unforgettable encounter this time. Some forces have tied you down that you will never get married. As you are empowered and those forces are broken, you will find your covenant home established for you. Some forces are standing on your destiny never to rise. As you are empowered from on high, you find the yokes are destroyed from your body. After this week, you are declared irresistible, unmolestable, unassaultable, in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. And what a joy to know that this coming Sunday, at the Dominion Summit, you'll be taking the key on dominion over death. <laughs> dominion over death. <laughs> From henceforth, no one here will bury his child. <laughs> dominion over death. I'm privileged to be one of those few people handed this revelation from the onset and I speak with all authority that those who receive what I'm given on this subject long life is guaranteed them any day because God cannot deny himself and from this church from henceforth a child will die a hundred years old dominion over death your right to determine how long you live 
it will be delivered into your hands as you come down here. You will see your children's children to the fourth generation. You will see your children's children to the fourth generation. And as your days, so shall your strength be. As your days, so shall your strength be. So shall it be. Father, thank you for this wonderful day. Take all the glory. Take all the praise. The Bible says, The Lord shall send the rod of his strength out of Zion, rule thou in the midst of the enemies. From this time onward, by reason of this empowerment that is coming your way this week, you shall begin to rule in the midst of your enemies. Whatever could not stand Jesus will not be able to stand you anymore. Every captive of the wicked one, this week, you are going into your liberty. Every destiny that is tied down by the power of God, such destinies have been released this week. This is your week of new beginnings. This is your week of turn around. Yeah. This spiritual opportunity this week will bring about the realization of your destiny of dominion and cry. Yeah. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name. Go in peace. No evil report from your end. And no evil report comes your way from your loved ones. This week is a week of no distraction. This week you are building up your power reserves. And this week you are having a new start altogether. So shall it be. In Jesus name. Bishop David Oyedepo has just placed in your hands the key to all-round victory, exploits, success, and unquestionable dominion over all life's challenges. The end has come to all your struggles in Jesus' name. Please share your testimony with us. Write Bishop David Oyedepo, PMB 216888 Ikeja, Lagos, Nigeria or call 774-7546, 774-7547. Seven seven four seven five four eight, or send your testimony through email bishop at winnerscanaanland.org and best of all come hear the man of God live as you worship with us at Faith Tabernacle Canaan Land Kilometer 10 Idiroko Road Otter on Thursdays 5pm to 7pm on Sundays 9am to 11.30am <laughs>